Time now for the award-winning number one local talk show in Northeast Pennsylvania, The Sam LaSant Show. Now here's your host, Sam LaSant. Well, my friends, he was elected in 2011 as a Schuylkill County coroner. He said he was going to make changes, and he has been making these changes. My guest is the Schuylkill County coroner, Dr. David Moylan. He is a radiation oncologist, and he's the medical director of the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute, and he's here on my show today. And also today, folks, we're going to touch on a few things, uh, not only educational, but we're going to talk about a very serious thing that's happening in this country, a methamphetamine. Uh, the use of that, and we're going to show you some actual before and after commercials. Uh, and if you have any young children around or any high school kids, college kids uh, who are, um, just, just tell them to watch this show. Now, you know we're on the web 24-7, so no matter where they are in the world, they can watch this show. Uh, but let me welcome my good friend, Dr. David Moylan. How are you, doctor? Sam, uh, it's a pleasure to be here, and I'm well, thank you. Well, I want to congratulate you so far what you've been accomplishing as a Schuylkill County coroner. I know there's a lot of interesting things. that When you sat here before, uh, you know, when you said this is the reasons why I wanted to run be, uh, for Schuylkill County coroner, I always, uh, I always admire people who say I'm going to do these things, and then I like to call them to task, okay, um, as, um, uh, as Governor Corbett did. And uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, he is um, not popular because he said, I'm going to straighten out the state of Pennsylvania. And what he said he was going to do, David, is what he's doing, and it's, it's, it's unpopular. So I don't understand the dichotomy here. However, when you sat here and we talked about the coroner, and it's a very, very important row office in any county, okay? Some of the things you talked about, um, and let's talk about what, you, what you've accomplished so far. Well, one of the things that I wanted to bring to the office was education, not only for the public, but also for our very fine deputy uh, force. And uh, when I came to the uh, row office, there were about 30 fine uh, young men and women serving the county as uh, deputies. Um, but one of the things that I thought was to bring in some continuing education, the way we have to do it in uh, medicine. To maintain your license, you have to have so many hours of educational uh, effort every year. Now, it is required of the uh, coroner and the chief deputy coroner, but I wanted to bring the deputy uh, force into this. And with that in mind, we started a monthly meeting, which we have over at the Simon Kramer Institute. And uh, again, these meetings are conducted at no expense to the uh, county. This, we've been doing this through an organization that we uh, founded called the Schuylkill County Association of Medical Legal Death Investigators. And that title is rather broad for an, 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 a reason. We wanted to include our uh, colleagues in law enforcement, the, the uh, emergency communication uh, system, several of uh, who uh, are already our deputies, as well as uh, the emergency medical uh, services, the first responders, and we have a good, I think, working relationship with many of the local law enforcement agencies as well as Pennsylvania State Police. Now, w w by doing this, how does this benefit, you know, let's say, the uh, Schuylkill County um, residents? Well, to have a uh, highly trained uh, deputy force, they are basically uh, the first <coughs> responders. They're on the scene, and how you conduct those first couple of uh, minutes or hours of investigation have long-lasting um, implications. And one of our deputies was just uh, telling me how uh, an incident that had occurred two years ago was just coming to the, through the legal system. And fortunately, he had excellent documentation of every encounter, the photographs, etc. And uh, last evening, we had one of our monthly meetings, and we discussed the determination of the time of death. How do you do that? Checking for various physical signs. But another was the measurement of core body temperature. And there's various techniques to that, so we had demonstrations on that, and uh, it was uh, very enlightening to the, everyone who attended. Now, you just recently had the second annual forensic science um, conference, correct? Yes, and that was also held <coughs> at the Simon Kramer Institute, and uh, again, sponsored by our Educational and Scientific Trust at no expense to the county. You know, this is... Uh, a recurrent theme, you know, we're all under budgetary uh, restrictions. But we were able to recruit speakers, high quality speakers from all over the state, 
including a professor of forensic anthropology from Mercyhurst College, or it's now a university in Erie. Uh, several of our uh, fellow coroners participated, including uh, Patty Ross from Blair County, and uh, a, a gentleman that I'm just proud to uh, be associated with, uh, Scott Grimm, who is the coroner of uh, Lehigh uh, County. We're working closely with uh, Mr. Grimm and his organization because uh, many of our uh, citizens get life flighted out of the county, so um, it's good to have a working relationship there. But we were able to get the uh, state attorney general's office to approve this conference for eight hours of continuing education for coroners and chief deputy coroners. So with that requirement that's mandatory, we did have an influx of uh, fellow uh, coroners from around the, uh, this side of the state. You know, sometimes, when, and we, we talked about this before, when a row office is running and, and you know, they, you have the recorder of deeds, you have the controller, you have the coroner. Uh, of course, the county of Luzerne um, changed uh, the, the form of government. But oh, in your case, right. some of the things, uh, you know, just generally, you know, what does a coroner do? You know, a basic 101 description of what a coroner does. Well, the, the main charge in the county code is for the coroner to pronounce death. And that's, uh, again, the importance of having a rapid response team uh, located throughout the uh, county. We have a geographically a widespread county. And these men and women can be on the scene within uh, minutes to uh, pronounce death. But then the uh, death investigation starts on the scene. And our other charge is to determine the cause of death, but also the manner of death. And you have. Uh, homicide, suicide, fortunately uh, uh, the homicides are rare. The suicides, as we'll talk about later, are not so rare. And then we have natural causes. Um, but uh, that's the start of the investigation. And those things could be very critical, especially if there's any legal implications involved. Again, uh, the importance for uh, team teamwork with the law enforcement and uh, EMS. And during, when I open the uh, session for the second annual forensic science uh, symposium that we had, I referred back to a movie that was uh, popular in 1943. It was called Gung Ho, and it was about a Marine uh, assault div division, or actually it was a battalion, that uh, attacked Macon Island, and it was uh, headed by a lieutenant colonel named Evans Carlson. But uh, he had coined that term from the Chinese gung ho. And it means working together and working in harmony. And I think that uh, captures our philosophy in the um, department. Have you been able to um, uh, eliminate uh, political inf interruptions uh, and interference um, and, you know, run your office, whether you're a Republican or a Democrat, be able to run that as, you know, as you should be running that? Uh, I, yes, I'm going to say that we are, and um, we have a wonderful solicitor that's been uh, very helpful. And uh, <coughs> who is that? The, uh, his name's Eric Micah. Oh, I know Eric well. Yeah. Yes, and yes. for his work for elder yeah. abuse, yes, and it, we've incorporated some of those. And uh, his dad was a uh, the county coroner. Uh, he expired in 1999. I had the privilege of taking care of him, but uh, so. Um, I didn't know him at the time, but Eric and I now go back quite a quite a way. So running running the coroner's office is is a very important uh, matter, particularly when it comes to um, if there's going to be any legal issues involved. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Yes, and we also work carefully with um, Karen Byrne Noon, the district attorney, and her her mm -hmm. team in the, the courthouse. So. Folks, I'm talking to Dr. David Moylan, and he is the uh, Schuylkill County Coroner. Uh, we come back, it's interesting information for folks about suicides uh, and also the, uh, the drug meth. Um, and we're going to show you um, some commercials that were made, and you're going to see, it's going to shock you folks when you see that. And that's why I'm saying to you, if you know of anybody, any family, uh, any of your grandchildren or children, they should watch this show and they'll get an education. Stay with us. Welcome back to the Sam LaSanne Show, folks. Remember, 247sspTV.com. My email is sam 
at SSPTV.com. Thank you so much, folks, for the tremendous response we're having on Comcast 7, uh, which is greater uh, Pottsville area, and also Service Electric Cable Vision, the greater Hazleton area. And, of course, we're now in some areas in Harrisburg system and also the Wilkesbury uh, Kingston mountaintop system. We appreciate that. Now able to hit over... Three million households, uh, we appreciate it. And for those people who are watching the girls and all around the town on our SSP TV, uh, Local News 13, uh, once again, thank you. The surveys are in. We appreciate your support. Dr. David Mo Moylan is my guest, and he is the coroner of Schuylkill County. He is also the medical director for the Simon Kramer Cancer Institute. And uh, we're talking a little bit about what's happening in your office. Now, one of the things that we're finding very disturbing uh, and we talked a little bit about it before, Dave, was the suicide rate. Give me that chronological number again and what, what you think could be going on here. Yes. Um, we've actually, we have a treasure trove of information in the coroner's office going back actually a few decades. And we hope to mine that information to come up with some data. And uh, we have uh, contacted a, a graduate a student program. Um, and we hope to be able to share that information in a confidential uh, manner to uh, look at the science of, of this. Um, but as I, I mentioned, um, as part of our bereavement uh, program, we started a memorial tree uh, planting. The trees are planted at uh, Simon Kramer Institute and on Memorial Day, and this is going to be our second annual um, tree planting. Um, Last year we planted two trees, one to uh, honor the memory of adults that had gone through the uh, coroner's office and also uh, the f relatively few children, thank God, that uh, we've had to care for. This year we're going to plant three trees. And the third tree is going to be to uh, honor the memory of people that lost their lives to suicide. And I looked over the statistics in our county going back to 2002. And between 2002 and 2008, on the average, 18 people lost their lives to suicide uh, each year. 2008, that was the start of the Great Recession. Well, 2009 in our county, the uh, death rate due to suicide jumped up to 35. And, you know, is there cause and effect? Uh, who knows? But again, we might require some study there. 2010 dropped down a little bit to uh, 20, 2011, 24. And now this past year, my first year in office, it uh, jumped up to 32. We're going to respond to that. So far this year, there have been 13 suicides in our county. And if you do the math, that would put us on track for 34 deaths. What are the ages? The ages are, I'd say, 8 to 80. Yeah. What, no, are uh, there any primary? Teenagers, um, th I'd say it's pretty evenly spread out. Is there really? And uh, j just within the last week, we saw uh, one gentleman that uh, took his life. And his wife had died a few days before. So, you know, maybe a se severe depression, a natural loss. But then we've seen uh, teenagers uh, doing it. And Sam, it's all senseless. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's, it is senseless. But you know, the, the thing that uh, the concerns sometimes is, you know, the communication between maybe families, guardians, or friends, or whatever. And sometimes when you find someone committed suicide, most of the responses are, Dave, oh, my God, I would never imagine that such and such would have committed suicide. You know, you, so you don't know the troubles and tribulations yes. that these people are going through. Yes. How do we, you know, I know you're, you're, you're promoting suicide prevention. And for those families who have lost loved ones from suicide, believe me, they can tell you stories. Sometimes, 90%, I think, at times, they're shocked as to Indeed what happened. They, they have no idea what my Indeed kid just committed are. suicide and, you know, you're, you're, you're blown away. You know, what are some of the things you think telltale signs that we could, we could look for if there's such a thing. I don't know. Well, I'd like to draw your attention to uh, a program that we're going to sponsor, um, again, over at the Simon Kramer Institute, uh, with uh, Debbie Heim, who is the director of the, the county suicide prevention uh, task force. She does a fantastic job. And she came in with a program called QPS, Question, Persuade, and Refer. 
you have to identify the problem. Then you have to talk to the people and then refer them for help before it's too late. And De Debbie made that presentation with her team uh, to our deputies, again, getting the, the deputy force up to speed on this. But she's also going to present it to the uh, public uh, at Simon Kramer Institute on the 18th of July. And it'll be from 10.30 in the morning to around 1. There's going to be a lunch that we're sponsoring, uh, basically a free lunch if somebody wants to make a free will offering, all uh, well and good. But you know, it's an interesting thing, Dave. You're a coroner, and you deal with death. And yet you're probably one of the most strong, strong probably the most strongest, strong people that you want to pre preserve life, okay, as, as a major pro-life person as I am. And, of course, you know, if you take all the political nonsense out of it, and we're looking at the destruction of these unborn babies that, you know, last year over 380-some thousand unborn babies were, were pulled apart and mur murdered and massacred, uh, by, mostly by Planned Parenthood. And here you are trying to, here you are trying to save lives, okay? Uh, you, you wonder the mentality of the country, you know, particularly with educated people. The, uh, when you talk about this doctor... Yeah, the elite, okay? You talk about this Dr. Gosnell, who, yeah. who actually in the court was smirking, proud that he killed these babies, and the mentality that the pro-life, pro-choice people have, it just, it, it, it just I, I can't understand it. Sam, what that trial and that whole story down there in uh, North Philadelphia brought out was the horror, the sheer horror of it. And uh, I think the tide will be turning when people say, no, you just cannot... Uh, kill your, your offspring. It's just against human uh, nature, divine law, natural law. <laughs> when you have the President of the United States get up and tell Planned Parenthood, God bless you, after they've just slaughtered 380 some thousand people, tells me a story about what this president's moral values are, and yet he's a great speaker, and everybody just, speaker. some people just think he walks Very on engaging. water, and his wife is for partial birth abortion, okay, was upset when the Supreme Court said this. You talk about substance in this country, Dave, we're going down the toilet. Sam, we were just uh, talking about it. Um, the, the tree, that we're, the third tree that we're going to plant this year, I'm going to call it the tree of divine mercy. Mm -hmm. And uh, my message to the people that are contemplating suicide would be the name of the TV show that was hosted by Archbishop Fulton Sheen. And you surprised me when you said you had met him. I met him in Because person. I figure you're way too young for that. I was only four years old. <laughs> okay, <laughs> that explains yeah, it. Yeah. But his show was called Life is Worth Living. Yeah. And 50 million people watched that show and beat Milton Berle, okay, who was the number one in that show. Now, what does that tell you? 50 million people watch that show trying to get some substance, okay? And what the mainstream media is doing today, they're trying to prevent the family stuff. They're trying to prevent all that. We see it every day, and we wonder sometimes why people commit suicides, why they shoot people, why they have no respect for properties, why they have no respect for that. As a coroner, even though you deal with death, you're, 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 you're trying to be pro-life. When um, many university hospitals in their morgue would have above the uh, entrance to the morgue, the dead teach the living. Period. Folks, I'm talking to Dr. David Moreland, not becoming political, folks. What I'm saying to you is actually facts. I'm not lying. I'm not etc. You know I'm a pro-life person. I've, I've invited Planned Parenthood many times to come on my show to tell me why they think they should pull little legs apart and doctors really think nothing, pulling their apart and aborting children. We don't like to hear that. But this is what President Obama is, is for. He's for Planned Parenthood, and he gets up in front of them, and, and they give him a standing ovation. Let's kill more babies. And, and he says, God bless you. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to the San Luis Show, folks, 24-7. Thank you for making uh, my show the number one talk show in northeastern Pennsylvania. I truly appreciate that, and I thank you. Dr. David Moylan is my guest. And he is the Schuylkill County Coroner. Before we get into the uh, showing you some drastic stuff, okay, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to shock you when you see it, the commercials that are made on, on the use of meth, uh, the virtual autopsies, autopsies that you're doing. Yes, uh, I think we're uh, blazing a, a trail in that regard. They're basically uh, built around a CT scan uh, to examine the internal organs, uh, the brain, without doing an open uh, autopsy 
which is actually quite expensive and many people have reservations, either religious or just uh, conceptual um, reservations about having a loved one's body opened up. But um, a handful of places are doing it in the United States. At the Dover Air Force Base, they do it with the returning veterans. Uh, University of Maryland, in conjunction with the um, Medical Examiner's Office for the State of Maryland, uh, does it in Baltimore, University of um, New Mexico. And uh, I think we are the only small uh, county that's doing it. But I want to just show you the power of it. Is it effective? It's, it's extremely effective. Now, it doesn't, uh, if we're going to court, we're going to do an open autopsy. Yeah. Cause, uh, but it gives the family a good opportunity. Yes, and what a, a closure. Yeah. And to cite an, a recent example, yesterday we had a, a tragic uh, car accident. Mm -hmm. But the body of the decedent was unmarked, really. A couple bruises here or there. The physical examination re revealed no obvious trauma. But the CAT scan showed extensive internal bleeding. Basically, the person died of shock from um, uh, bleeding into the and chest you were cavity. To determine that we were able to determine right. I want to move on, folks, to this, uh, the drug, meth. We've heard of it, okay? Now, what I'm going to show you are, are three commercials that they used that send a message. These are actual, even though they're commercials, they're act, you, you, this is true. So, Andy, play those commercials for me, please. Yeah. My parents think I'm sleeping at your house. Yeah, I'm just jumping in the shower. Okay, bye. just once. I'm going to smoke this just once. I'm going to steal just once. I'm going to sleep with him for meth just once. I'm going to try meth just once. Well, folks, sad, uh, Dave, but uh, that's, you see that all the time. I see it all, all too often in young people, but not limited to young people. Yesterday, I signed a death certificate on a 42-year-old uh, gentleman that had died with a methamphetamine level of 5,000, clearly in the uh, lethal range. And uh, it's, uh, I'm going to say it's epidemic. This, uh, these commercials were brought to my attention by a colleague from Western Pennsylvania, and they, they were made in the state of Montana, which apparently had an epidemic but very potent uh, message uh, with these commercials. You know, it just, uh, it's very sad when you see that happen and uh, you know, they get, uh, kids get uh, young people or whatever, like even older people, they just think it's cool. Cocaine, marijuana, um, you know, the legalization of marijuana, 90% of the people in California will tell you it's a great thing until you, but you don't hear the sad stories of when they moved on to heavier stuff, the cocaine. This is a gateway drug, that, Sam. It's, there's no question about and it. And oftentimes yeah. when we do the toxicology, that's mixed in there. You ever wonder if there's something going on in our country that we're not aware of, that they're allowing all of this craziness happen, and you know, even you have, like you said, the elite um, that think it's okay. Uh, Dave, we could probably have another hour discussion. Um, to do it first of all, I want to congratulate you in the coroner's office uh, for being um, honest and sincere as, and forget your political affiliation, but people like you and Governor Corbett who said they were going to do certain things and they did it. Sometimes they're not popular, but they, they get their job done, you know, and I appreciate that. Thanks for your support. Folks, Dr. David Moylan, he is the medical director of the Cancer Kramer and Can uh, uh, Simon Kramer Cancer Institute. Any information you need on that, you can go to the website and get whatever you can. We'll see you next time.